What's going on y'all? On Warren Car is back again in Southern California and today I'm going to be presenting the 2024 Ford Mustang. So what is the Ford Mustang? It was originally conceived by Ford in 1964 for the 1965 year and has been running ever since. One of Ford's best-selling models to date and this is the newest version. A lot of people think that this is a whole new car However, you'd be surprised to find that this is simply just a facelifted version of the previous Mustang. As you can tell, everything from the middle of the wheels and out has been changed, but everything in between the wheelbase is exactly the same as the previous Mustang. You can see that the front fascia has been improved with these new upgraded headlights, as well as grill design. The headlights kind of following the taillight design of the Mustang. So just taking a look around the Mustang, we can see that aside from the changes cosmetically in the front and rear, most things have been left alone. You can see that the rear, the tail lights have been redesigned to have this crazy angle to them, as well as the rear bumper. This rear end is a lot more aggressive than it was in the previous model. And I think it looks really good. In my opinion, this is probably one of the best Mustangs that has come out so far in terms of looks, simply because it's just a head turner on the road. Driving this around for the past couple days, you know, I mean, it is a four cylinder, it's an EcoBoost. It's not a fast car. It doesn't have the nice wheels or any of the cool trim that the GT has, but it still turns heads. Everyone's looking at this car for some reason. I think it's the front end. What do you guys think? To me, this front end redesign almost looks kind of like a Camaro. I know it's not completely there, but the clean look, the angularness of the lights, not being round, not having any really circular inspiration, just reminds me a lot of the Camaro. So this is the Mustang that has the engine that no Mustang enthusiast likes, the EcoBoost. Now I know what you guys are thinking, the EcoBoost is a really good engine. It's powerful for its size and it's fuel efficient. Like it's a great motor. What are you talking about? No. A four cylinder, two liter turbo engine is not the motor that should go in a car like this. That being said, this car with its EcoBoost engine is actually very practical for what it is. Let me explain. So not only do you have a Mustang in terms of appearance, you have over 300 horsepower and 300 pound feet of torque at your disposal. You have four seats, granted the rear seats aren't usable for normal size adults but you also have a big trunk as well. So what cars offer this package? A lot of European cars. What American cars offer this package? What, the four cylinder Camaro? But that doesn't even make 300 horsepower. This car makes around 315 horsepower and almost 350 pound feet of torque. And you can hear the turbos too, which is really cool. They give it a little bit of a wastegate noise, so it makes it a little bit more engaging. But that being said, it's not really the sounds you wanna hear in this car. Let's talk about the spec of this car. We have a gray with the black wheels. We'll just call them black wheels with these big tires. They are fat. What size are they? 235 50s. Some chunky ones with a cloth interior with the white piping. As you can see, this is probably one of the lowest spec Mustangs out there. And I still have to say that this car isn't that bad. Being base spec is never a good thing. However, these cars being a Ford are at the pinnacle of American technology. And you can actually tell right when you get in, when you see these two screens. Before the Mustang used to have a conventional interior layout. And this year was the first year they decided to add some screens. What do you guys think? You know, it doesn't look too bad in here. Though I do question how the rectangular screen and round wheel combination, how was that, you know, thought of or addressed during the conceptualization of this vehicle? I say that with all cars that have these screens behind the wheel, these wheels just kind of block off the corners of the screen, which make them a little bit less useful than what they should be. But let's start it up and take a listen to that 2.3 liter EcoBoost four-cylinder. Something interesting about this car, for the GT model, the V8, these screens are actually one panel. 
and for the cheap models like this one that i have today they made it two panels i don't know if it's to make you upset that these don't connect or something not sure why they decided to go with two different tiers of screens um in terms of the actual build themselves i know that on cars with regular infotainment screens they offer different size screens that's normal however it's just a little bit of a stretch to to think that they developed an entirely new system simply for the richer customers anyway moving on to this wheel we have a ton of buttons on this wheel however this wheel does look pretty good i do like the flat bottomness this part right here is really nice to grab when you're doing turns that's what i really like about flat bottom wheels you it has like a corner you can like really fit your hand in fits nicely but as you can see we got a ton of options here uh buttons we're missing some stuff but we do have the lane keep assist cruise control all that good stuff and on this side we have uh the controls for the screen as well as our multimedia functions and volume we have a carbon fiber trim not sure if this is real carbon it does look like a real weave but not sure if it's just plastic or carbon that trim translates around the cabin as you can see we have a two-tone with like this soft touch i wouldn't call it leather but it's stitched in with the uh, cloth and carbon fiber we'll call it interior panels so let's move on to this what do we have here that's different from other things well this is ford's newest infotainment system and as you can tell it is pretty darn good oh, i just hit a home it was already on home anyway as you can see it's pretty responsive um let's see let's go to settings let's see what we got for settings some lag there but it is a Ford. It's not gonna be obviously the best infotainment, but it is good. It looks good, crisp lines. I don't know if it's just me, but I've always had this problem with Mustangs specifically, that uh, the CarPlay, I don't know if it's the outlet that the CarPlay plugs into, but it's just like, it, it's buggy. The music is buggy. The sound cuts in and out sometimes, especially over bumps. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if that's a Ford thing, a Ford infotainment system, or it's a Ford hardware, th hardware thing with the outlets themselves i don't know just i've been having that problem with this mustang as well another thing you can notice is that there are no climate controls there are no physical buttons for climate controls i don't know why they do this i'm not a fan of digital climate controls especially these because first of all you're bouncing around this car is not a smooth car by any means so you're like hovering over these things trying to hit them i hit the seat warmer on accident without realizing not until my butt is 100 degrees that i realize that that thing is on full blast and then it takes a while to cool off. I think that this row of climate controls should have been its own separate physical row of buttons that could have sat right here. It would have been nice. I don't know why they didn't do that, but not a really a fan of digital climate controls, especially because everything is in here. Like to click on that, you gotta wait first of all. And now you're like, okay, what am I like? Okay, I want to control the vents. Like. You see how this is annoying to use? I don't, turn off climate control that way. Yeah, maybe it's just me and it's intuitive and I just don't feel like learning it right now, but I really, I don't like digital climate controls. Yeah, this is annoying. It's not the best system, not the worst system. However, the screen quality is very high and I think that should be addressed. The screens are really nice on this car. Both of them very clear, even in the brightest sun. Moving below, these are the only physical buttons we have on the infotainment screen. We have our auto stop start. This is how you turn it off. We have the Mustang button. So this shows you all your custom stuff. You have the track apps. You have auxiliary gauges, which are kind of cool. You get some extra gauges. You can even have more than those three. Next to the Mustang button, we have the traction control, the hazards, the star button, which is a uh, I believe it's a custom page you can bring up, but on this one, it's just set to home and then set to the Mustang, the My Mustang page. And then finally we have Max. Which, uh, when I hit Max, it went to Max Heat. Um, so I'm not sure what, if you set it at Max Heat or Max Cold, all I know is that trying to turn this off is annoying. There we go. Under that, we have our charger ports. We have USB-C, USB-A, uh, and then uh, a 12 volt right there. Shifter right here, simple shifter. Not even a sport mode here. This is how base this model is. We just have low. 
Moving down below that, we have our electronic parking brake as well as our center console with some storage. Celsius, sponsor me. And then up above, we have sunglasses holder. We have some lights and then we have our vanity mirrors. Not bad. Mentioned this car is base, no sunroof, just this headliner. And then looking in the back, we can see the ample amount of rear leg space that our rear passengers have the luxury of experiencing. Regular size glove box with some storage on either side. Down here we have our lights. We got low beams. We got our auto low beam. So these switch between the low and high beams on their own. We have position lights and then we have off. I just keep them on auto. And then our window controls on the door. Also check out the quality of this backup camera. One of the best backup cameras I've seen. Look how bright that is. Like, you can see that from all the way back here. It's interesting because this car is sitting at a stock height and I know the wheels, like you can see they're kind of inset a little bit. There's like a good amount of camber with these rear wheels, especially when they become under some load, like if you're on an uneven surface. This car gets pretty low. Like if we space out these wheels and even keep the same stance, like it would be a pretty fire stance. This car with some bigger, wider wheels would look amazing. I saw a dark horse the other night. He just looked at me and waved, he already knew, but it looks so good. So here we have the 2.3 liter Ford EcoBoost engine found in the Mustang, as well as some other models. 315 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque, not a weak engine by any means. If it wasn't being compared to the V8, it would actually be a really good engine in my opinion. 2.3 liters making that much power and that much torque, really can't go wrong. It's attached to a 10-speed automatic transmission. That's probably the worst part of the drivetrain in my opinion. The transmission doesn't understand when to shift properly and it just always doesn't, it like holds gears too long or shifts too fast. It does both, it's kind of weird. But in terms of the engine itself and its power delivery, this car is perfectly fine. Looks like we have some leaks already. I wonder where that's coming from. Seems like engine oil, but you can hear how ticky this engine is. Doesn't really sound that great. Let's give it a rev or two. See how it sounds from inside the cabin. So yeah, I know I'm revving the car cold. It's a rental. It's all good. Yeah, I do like that induction noise. But I can't tell if that's pumped in through the speakers or not. One of the coolest new things about the Mustang, obviously, are these screens. Another thing you can do, customize. You can go to cluster theme or custom mode, cluster theme. Yep. You can change what you want it to look like. You got track, calm, normal. Sport, obviously, that's what we just did. And then we have Fox body, the old school Mustang gauges. But we'll keep it on sport. All right, let's see, backing up. Super nice camera. Let's see how this car is to drive. Oh, oh, the windows. So, the brand new 2024 Mustang. What is it like to drive? Well, if you're not comparing it to any other sports car, you're just comparing it for what it is on paper to itself, it actually is not bad at all. Throttle response time is good. The gear changes are the weak point, obviously, but the brakes are really good as well. Car is responsive. Steering is also very sharp. But obviously, this isn't a real Mustang. This is a sports car version of the Mustang, let me explain. So the Mustang is a V8 pony car. It's not a true muscle car. It's kind of like in between a sports car and a muscle car. By them introducing this four cylinder EcoBoost engine, they're trying to make it into a full on tuner car, if that makes sense. This car, the tuner car does not really work. It's way too big to be a proper tuner car. 
It's way too heavy. This weighs about 3,700 pounds. Just the power numbers aren't enough for it to just be properly suitable for what a tuna car is. It's not small enough. It's not powerful enough. And also it's like, that's not the ethos of the Mustang. It was never designed to be a tuner car. It's designed to be a pony car, which is like a sporty muscle car. The car turns in nice though. The steering is really good. Comparing this to that like of a Challenger, the steering is actually very sharp and responsive. The Challenger, the steering feels way more numb and a little bit lighter. This has a little bit heavier steering than the Challenger. I just can't get over how bad the sound is. The noise is really terrible. Like, <laughs> As you can see, it makes some power. 350 pound-feet of torque, so it got sideways a little bit, but not really. This car doesn't really like to slide all that much. Let me turn on the traction control before I get in trouble here. I really want to get my hands on a V8 version of this car. I don't know what to get in between a Scat Pack or basically a, a 392 or a Mustang GT. Obviously with the 392, you can get an older model of your car, so you're spending a little bit less. But in a couple years, like, I don't know what I would get. This, they're like completely two different markets now. So they kind of don't even compete. The 5.0 GT is dual overhead cam, high revving. The 392 is push rod revs to like six grand as well as the whole ethos and driving characteristics of each car this one handles really nicely and it's a lot lighter than the challenger the challenger is just a big old brute and has a big heavy feeling engine and heavy feeling drive characteristic in general <laughs> yeah i'm not really a fan of the sound you guys can tell me what you guys think but it just doesn't sound that inspiring to me the turbo sounds kind of cool, I guess, but the actual engine sound, especially because I really think they're piping in some fake sound here. You know, just, uh, man, I hate this about new cars, man. It's the worst thing. Auto start, stop. You always have to turn that off. I know you hear this engine. It sounds all sorts of wild. It's just like, that's what a 10 speed sounds like. It sounds ridiculous. You know, when I first was driving this car, I really thought this was a CVT, just of how weird the transmission shifts. It like hangs on the gears. It's like, I don't know if it builds up the boost without building up the RPM. I don't know how it works, but it just like, it sounds and feels like a CVT. All right, let's do a quick little pull. ride quality ride quality is okay in this car to be honest i i think that's one of the mustang's weak points is the ride quality this car feels like it's jumping around a lot it feels weird it feels oversprung if that makes sense like it feels really twitchy and springy as well as you feel every little like you see all those lines on the road all those repair marks are filling in the cracks you feel every single one and you hear it too like it's not a very quiet ride I'm sure this has the stock suspension and the magnetic ride suspension would probably be a lot better in terms of the sound quality as well as the ride quality. But that's just something I felt in previous Mustangs too. I've driven the convertible one and the coupe. The convertible one is even worse. The convertible one feels like it's flexing. Like see how this this bump in the road, the convertible one would creak and flex around that. But let's see how it goes over these bumps. You know, not too bad. <laughs> I was giving a gas in the corner and did not want to move. That's that automatic transmission, that 10 speed doesn't want to do anything. <laughs> well, it broke the tires loose a little bit there. That about wraps up my car review of the 2024 Mustang EcoBoost. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you all again with more car buyers guides and car reviews, so subscribe. Leave a comment, don't forget to like the video, and as always, have a good one, be easy.